This review video is the assembly video for the Banana Hobbies YF23. It was one of two planes built to compete against what ultimately was chosen, the Raptor. So today's plane was a loser in competition, but it's won my heart as something beautiful and unique. I'm looking forward to the assembly and then seeing how it will fly. I requested this review because my club has a jet rally the first weekend in November and I wanted to bring something different. The uh, plane was made in gray and one in black, the originals. The black one was the Black Widow 2, the gray one was the Gray Ghost. Looking at the cover, it appears I'll have the Gray Ghost. This will be the opening of the box, laying out of the parts, and I'll be back with you in a moment. As you can see, we have a special molded box designed exactly for the plane. I really appreciate that the companies have changed their philosophy of an open brown box to one designed to fit their product. The, bag, the parts are all individually bagged. It uh, is well packaged and has survived the trip from China to this country and from Southern California up to Stockton, California. Everything is out of the box cut out of the plastic bags. I used the X-Acto knife with the blade for my last project. If I need to use my hobby knife again, I will put a new blade in it. No sense dulling it up when you're cutting out the parts, but take your time. Cut out the, cut out the bags so you can get your parts out. Don't try to rip them. I know too many people that have damaged a part just ripping them open to get to them quickly. The fuselage comes in three sections. Our main section which has a radio compartment and a motor compartment back here. Looking up the tail end, there are two brushless motors for the EDFs, they're 70 millimeters. We have a joining section here, a bunch of wires, a uh, wire section there, probably where the receiver goes. The cockpit appears to be where the battery will go. It has uh, four pins, two on each side with holes larger at the back side. It'll take a little work to get it out the first time because they don't want to pop out, but it will be easy enough to control. At the site, we see rudder and reed track wires there, and a separate nose cone. Oh, I've already pinned part of the assembly. The wings come in two sections. Each have two servos, a flap and an aileron servo, and there are two vertical stabs with rudders, each has its own servo. So just there alone we have two, four, six servos, the uh, retracts, and there are brakes on this. I'm going to be using a Spectrum uh, 8 channel receiver with my JR11X to control it because I have one handy. Um, I could use either my Futaba or my Spectrum multi-channels. You, couldn't, you can fly this with seven channels, but if you have eight or more, I would recommend using that so that you can use the uh, digital brakes and the flaps and not have to trade off one, with, one for the other. Instruction manual, which I will be going through next. And the small parts is three bags of control horns and screws for mounting them with clevises and control rods, a bag of spare clevises, two wing rods, those are the wing rods, and then there are four of these, which I'll learn their use, and two little plastic cover plates. So, not a lot of parts, this should be a quick assembly. Now, to know what I'm doing, I'll read the instruction manual. There's also a tube of glue, which we may or may not use. I do have some medium thick CA here with me to uh, glue if I have to, but it looks like I'll be using my screwdriver quite a bit to put on some control horns as the first part of my assembly. I've looked the parts over closely while taking the still pictures for this, and the two wires up here will be going back into the center section where the receiver will go. One is to lower the retract, and the other goes into a rudder control to steer the front retract. As you can see, I have the canopy off. Basically, after you lift one corner off, it's easy to that's, get that side, and the other side came quickly. Now, when we first looked at it, there was a rudder wire sticking out here. That's the steering wire, and it's caused a little damage to the finish. I will be looking to mix up some dark gray, testing it on the inside where it can't be seen to, for a match, and then covering up that little blemish that came from the factory. 
So the uh, landing gear looks nice and stout. Looking forward to getting on with the build. Oh, one more thing though. The connectors for the battery, the flight pack, are sort of bullet shaped. One rather large, one rather small. Um, not used to these connectors. I don't see any matching connectors. My batteries, six cell ones that are for the, that I'll be using this plane, already have Dean's Ultra connectors, which arguably are not the best for something that has this voltage straw, but I personally haven't experienced problems with them. So I'll be converting these to the matching Dean's connector to use with my existing batteries that I fly in my FMS P51 Mustang um, that I reviewed previously. Well, I finished attaching the control horns to the different control surfaces. All three bags of control horns had different size screws in them and one had different size control rods. The horns were all the same. The flaps used two larger screws in the front and two, large, two shorter screws in the back. So the bag had four larger ones, four shorter ones. The ailerons had the shortest screws of all, but two, four longer ones for the two in front and four shorter ones for the two in back. The rudders had eight screws that were all the same length and they mounted the control horn and it has the longest control rod. So easy to tell the parts one from one another when you get down to it. While the camera was off, I went on the internet to Banana Hobby and looked at the battery they sell for this plane. It's a six cell, 4,000 milliamp battery pack, and it looks like it has connectors that match up with these, but I have Pete's Signature Series with a Dean's connector, so I'm gonna clip these off with my cutters, then connect my Dean's connector with those with a crimper. There's the completed product. They sell the crimping material in different sizes at Radio Shack. I've connected the 5 volt back. I've connected the flap connector, the gear connector, and the rudder. The rudder is just temporary and it's just to steer the wheel. I misspoke earlier when I referred to this as the rudder. It's actually considered the elevator and uh, I apologize for that misspeak earlier in this uh, video. Everything is beeping right now because I don't have the uh, throttle connected, but I do have the gear working and so I know that things are working right. And I have the rudder connected temporarily just to make sure that everything is working in the right way. Well, the camera was off, I just connected the uh, front part of the fuselage. I'll deal with connecting those to the receiver later. I trial fitted the left side of the wing onto the fuselage with the fuselage upside down. These wires will need to be tucked into the wing when we have them all connected. The uh, instructions show these parts in the wing first, but I found a stopper inside the fuselage and no stopper inside the wing, so I glued the wing rod with epoxy into the fuselage. The same with these hard plastic joiners. They uh, rotate a bit so they will fit the wing as it goes on. And there's screws, which I left on the outside, that can go into the wing itself if needed to help secure it. I've connected up the servos and the wing. I've started sliding the wing on. I've added no glue yet. In connecting up the servos, I wanted to make sure they were operating in the proper direction. The aileron servo is centered. As a left servo, it's working properly. The flap servo is centered and pulls down when activated. I'm not certain that I want it centered. I may want it more to the um, back side, but I'm contemplating that at this point. The wings are both glued on. The ailerons and flap servos are properly connected. I'll still do some fine adjustment at the uh, control rods, but they are working properly and uh, it's all good to go. Next we put on the uh, tail feathers, which are designated elevators in the instruction manual. The stabilizers 
or rear stabilizers get glued in place and they have this little plastic plate to help guide them up. The little curve end goes on the inside to curve with the fuselage. I'm a little concerned about the excess wire but I've decided I'm just going to glue them in place and have the wire stick out. I can always remove these plates later and tuck it in underneath there. Well, I'm just about finished with the assembly. The tail feathers glued on. The plastic guide is in the back. Um, right now the glue is setting up. I don't want to move it. But let's cover the mounting of the nose. It is also going to be glued in place. Notice that it has a piece coming up and two uh, side trenches. The fuselage has a piece coming down and two side trenches. The wires will go in those trenches going back from the nose cone for the landing gear and coming forward for the battery with the uh, battery wires. I will be putting glue all around the inside portion of the foam up against the sides here and here and having the wires fed through before I put any of it having the wires fed through before I put any of it together permanently. So let's get on that right now. The assembly is now complete except for balancing the plane. I've got 30 minute epoxy up on the nose. I use 15 minute epoxy on the wings and tail feathers. I'm glad I gave myself some working time but I'm glad it wasn't a whole lot because I held the wings against the fuselage several times during that uh, setup period and, and even more so with the tail feathers to have a nice um, flush fit. I may drizzle a little glue in from the top of the wings but I'm very happy with a solid bead of glue in the middle and bottom portion of both wings. The uh, very front of the nose cone is just held on by a magnet so that I have access to the uh, servo for the rudder, the uh, steering I should say, if needed. I cannot take the plane apart. Now that it's glued together, it's going to be transported this way, it's going to be stored this way. So it's a good thing I have room for it at home. All in all, a fairly easy assembly.